我喜欢这边，我要住这边，这是我的家。So like the silhouette of the mountains, it's so pretty. It had like emotional overflow for half an hour, just ended up crying. I just had stinky tofu all the time. It's so good. It's true Taiwan, but different. You have Kenting, but it's more man-made, and here is more rough because of the strong Amis culture. My name is Janet. Here in Dulan for almost seven years. I'm Helena. I'm from Germany. I live in Japan. I'm from France originally, and Dulan for eleven years. My name is Mark. I lived in Taiwan nearly 20 years. I'm from Hungary. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm from the Netherlands too. I'm also two weeks in Taiwan. I'm Nigel. I live in Dulan for seven years. From Curacao. From France in Dulan seven years. My name is Scott. I'm originally from California. My name is Pavo. In Taiwan for two and a half months. What originally brought you out to this beautiful part of Taiwan? Traveling and I met my wife. She was working in a hostel. My dad has a history with Taiwan. My dad was in the nuclear industry. And Taiwanese people from the nuclear industry were coming to South Africa and visiting us, even coming to our house. Then in my final year of uni, was this Canadian exchange student, and he's like, bro, hey, you got to go to Taiwan. It's like, <laughs> best part in the world, eh? When things went sour with my fiance, it just seemed like the natural thing for me to do was leave and come here to Taiwan. Came here with my wife. We were living in Korea. Came on a visa run to Taiwan. We we liked it so much that when it came time for us to go back to Korea, we canceled our plane ticket and stayed. We opened up a pop-up taco shop, ran that for about 10 or 11 months. So that was like eight years ago. Now I find myself single and on the road again and looking for a place to settle down. I was in uh, Okinawa. I met somebody from Taiwan. He said, yeah, and in Taiwan they speak more English. I looked for serving and something to do, cooking for sure. And then I came here and I think in the first two weeks uh, I knew this was my place. And after one month I made a proposition to the landlord. Now I took the business over. <laughs> Seven years, I have a kid, a wife, five dogs, bought a small property. My roots are Good. going. <laughs> so from Tokyo to Taipei, someone recommended this hostel. Basically, Dulan is the perfect mixture out of a small nature town with a convenience store and with people who you can meet, but you can also just like dis disappear into nature. We just really? came from uh, Yulin. We met there, all three of us then. We just travel down to this spot. When we arrive in this area, I have a good feeling. First, my wife, they say, Dulan, Dulan, uh, it's no business. What are you going to do? Uh, I open a restaurant, mostly French food. Next door is an uh, art gallery. Third one was an uh, antique shop. And then he works <laughs> against the herd. <laughs> So when I was still in the Philippines, I was doing a part-time home-based job teaching English to Taiwanese and he was my student. My husband brought me here to Taidong and we passed by Dulan and I'm like, oh my God, this place is so beautiful. When we had that opportunity to have a restaurant in Dulan, like pizza restaurant, we're like, let's go. Dulan has this reputation that a lot of foreigners live here. Do you think there's a reason that this place attracts so many people from abroad. You have Kenting, but it's more man-made and here it's more rough because of the strong Amis culture. Uh, you don't have that where we come from. So the Netherlands is lowlands, really flat. Having mountains and oceans so close to each other is still a very spectacular to me. After surfing, after a beach activity, they come to our restaurant. So other Taiwanese, when they see that, they ask me, why there's a lot of foreigners here in Dulan? It's so beautiful here and there's so many things to do. This reminds me a lot of home, like a safe version of, of what my home could have been if it wasn't such a dangerous country to live in. Mountains over there to the west, sea to the east. South Point over there, it's where we go diving and spearing. It's where we go surf, foiling and windsurfing, subsurfing. Look how fucking long, when that thing gets big, that wave just runs the whole point. Beautiful spot, so lucky to be here, man. So the first evening I arrived here, I arrived pretty late and I immediately we ran to the beach. I saw like the silhouette of the mountains. It's so pretty. Yeah. It had like emotional overflow for half an hour and just ended up crying. We also went back uh, two nights ago and went skinny dipping. It's like a lot of fluorescent plankton. So it's like shooting stars and then you make the water glow. And the food is amazing. Mainly I just had stinky tofu all the time. <laughs> it's so good. The local people are friendly. They tolerate all the foreigners coming through and the hippies and the backpackers and, and the surfers. My wife, she just liked it here. I think she was just happy talking to like the local people, the kids. It's just relaxing. It's a really nice place to chill. Like I spend on this bed maybe 10, 10 hours on the day and it's like special vibe. It is really cool. Like it's true Taiwan, but different. We're not going to buy a Mercedes Benz tomorrow, but is it really the 
plan if you come to the land. We're very happy with our, our little dog. Ah, bah voilà, ma petit pagno. Oh, la petit pagno, baby. We like to go swimming. It's nice and quiet. Quality life, a slow life. If you have some friends stopping by, you have a cup of coffee or something. See my profile, uh, I like to eat also. I think it makes sense. You have beautiful nature, you have beach, you have surf, you have good food, and it's still like local in a way. I like it because it feels vibrant than the usual which I experience. Waterfall, secret places, especially after a typhoon or heavy rain. 二十二年前的杜兰跟现在有改变吗？非常的改变，改完非常多。那时候这里也还很偏僻，很少人进来玩。It was nothing actually when I came here first time. It was a Seven Eleven, one guest house opposite to Seven Eleven. Now can you imagine this little village? We have a fire station, two petrol station, family mart, Seven Eleven, four, five thousand people. How sweet, how sun, how cool are about Taichung? And you'd hear that all the time back in the day. Now it's not so common to hear that phrase anymore. Because now the jokes on them, and they're all trying to buy houses and land down here now. How do you feel like the local population responds to the change that's happened in Dulan? A lot of population in Dulan are like Taiwanese married to a foreigner, so they're more like open-minded, and then it doesn't really matter that much if you don't speak Mandarin. Here, the people I don't know if people are like overtly friendly, but they're not unfriendly. Yeah, they're tolerant. Right. They're tolerant. Yeah. And you know, and if you see the same people every day, you know, say hello. And so, like, we got to know the lady at the grocery store, the people who ran the 7 Eleven. The biggest group is still the indigenous. The locals are a little bit skeptical in the beginning. They were afraid that this is going to be like a second can thing. I do think we created a, a small economy also for the locals itself. At one point, it had 90% Amis, well, indigenous working here. Here, yeah. What are some of the challenges that a foreigner faces living in a place like this? Language. My Chinese is not good. Enough for business. After they start to speak a little bit more, I don't know. Go back to English. Stop that. It was hard to find a place to live. We ended up in a like, really old farmhouse, pretty much of a shack. We had to like rip out a termite-infested floor, but it had a great view. Dirt cheap. Very really hard to uh, rent a motorbike because I don't have international lessons. This problem in Taiwan. When I was in Taichung, there is no. Problem. Problem with rent scooter. This is depends on the regulant. I'm pretty lonely in summer, man. It's no wind, it's 38 degrees, oh, everyone's grumpy and hot. Even though it's, a, it's paradise, it still can feel a little bit claustrophobic. The problem for us is yeah. buy the product. Yeah. Fresh on chauvy, like some cheeses and all that. So we need to use internet delivery. But food is like clothes. I prefer to touch it before I buy it. They don't work like people in the city. If you're not qualified, there are maybe five others oh. to replace you. He came like a European chef shouting. It works against me. Fuck you. <laughs> Bye. Uh, yeah. I go somewhere and work in 7-Eleven. Chill, AC, and I get the same pay. What's like the viability of making a living out here? Is it? Oh, is this it? is difficult, yeah. yeah. People want to try, but in the end, if they cannot progress, then they go back to the city. If you can work remote, you have a few stock traders, crypto traders, one other Dutch guy, he's a gamer. we almost never seen him, unless he is by his tea, whatever. Then, of course, teaching English or restaurant hospitality business. But I became most popular, I think. I cook everything from scratch. Chicken stock, fish stock, veggie stock. They always say, oh, you're a tourist place. I know. A lot of people come here, that's true. But are you saying that tourists don't have standards. flavor standards? Yeah. yeah, I tried to before. We were totally illegal. We bought a car, drove it, you know, no license, no insurance. Don't know how the visa would work. I could teach English. I have degrees in the background, but I just, uh, I don't want to. I'm too old for that. <laughs> yeah. At the time, there were literally two or three places that employed people as English teachers. If someone had a job, there's no way in hell they're letting go of the job. <laughs> yeah. It's like gold. It's like finding a treasure and telling other people about it. No way. It took me ages to find work here. <laughs> English teaching has a shelf life. A South African buddy, Tini, wanted to do music festivals. The only thing is Tini's music sucks. He's into rave music. No, no offense, guys. <laughs> don't, don't, don't start, don't start. <laughs> and that kind of scared me. And I was like, I don't know about that, dude. How about we do like a guest house or something and then occasionally do music festivals. So Tini suggested, let's call the place Wakali Gong for Gani Jiang because of the mates I'd met in Ilan who refused to speak Chinese and they, they always chatted in 
Taiwanese in the water and they keep saying I ran the water sports heated the bar and the, and the food and then the second floor was a small guest house and then occasionally we did little festivals punk band from Kaohsiung they played on our roof nearly got us kicked out of Dulan do you find that like living in a small town like this, it's difficult to meet people with like common interests? Twenty years ago, I came to Taiwan, my friends are a lot. My Taiwan friends are a lot. I'm going to go to Taiwan.